Hey, my name is Corey Lee. I'm a cultural catalyst. And in this video, we're going to be talking about feeding your faith and starving your fear based on the book, Think and Grow Rich. Hey, each week I drop videos just like this. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all the latest content. Let's go. Well, welcome back to our book study on the book, Think and Grow Rich. We've been diving into the 13 principles of success. Last video, you can check that out. We really talked about the first principle of success that he found in Thinking Grow Rich. He defined it as desire. Desire is the starting point of all achievement. If you have weak desires, show sure enough, you're gonna get some weak results. And in this video, we're talking about the second principle, according to Napoleon Hill, to think and grow rich. This chapter is called Faith. Now, when we look at faith in this video, I want you to think about outside of what we typically think about faith in religious connotations. I want you to think about faith as it relates to your goal, your dream, wherever you want to go in life. And Napoleon Hill calls faith the head chemist of the mind. I want to read you a quick quote from the book. He says, somewhere in your makeup, perhaps in the cells of your brain, lies sleeping the seed of achievement. If aroused and put into action, this will carry you to heights such as you may never have hoped to attain. I love that. James Allen says the greatest achievement was at first and for a time only a dream. The oak sleeps in the acorn. The bird waits in the egg. When you think about the word faith, what comes to mind for you? Like if me and you were just chilling, we were at the coffee shop and I ask you like, hey, what does faith mean? How would you define it? I wanna ask you your thoughts on another word, the word fear. Like when you think about fear, how do you define fear? What is fear? And as you think about your big goal, your dream, and whatever it is that you want to accomplish in your life, I want you to think about, is there proof? Is there 100% proof that you can accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish? Like, is there evidence? Have you provided evidence in your life that that can be a reality? Typically, there's not 100% proof that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. But I want you to think about this. When you think about fear, and I want you to think about the fears related to your goal. Are those fears a reality? Like, is there 100% proof that that thing you fear will become a reality? Like, is there 100% evidence? Is there proof that that will come true? Like for me, I want to give you an example. So say I want to be a speaker on the international stage. I want to be on the international stage, motivating and inspiring people all around the world to be world changers. Like that's my goal, my dream. And as I look at that, is there 100% proof that I can do that? Well, up until this point, there's not evidence, there's not proof. But as I begin to think about my fears, what if you get that call and you're not ready? What if you get that call and you go up there and you make a fool of yourself? What if somebody gives you an invitation as you going up on the stage like you slip and fall and break your leg, literally. As I think about those fears, is there evidence that that would 100% be a certainty? Like there's a possibility, but is it 100% true? And the reality is, no, there's no proof. See, faith and fear as it relates to my goal or dream, neither one have 100% proof, neither one have 100% evidence. The only way you will ever be able to prove your faith is by taking action. You'll never be able to prove if what you fear is actually perceived or real reality if you don't take action. I love what Teddy Roosevelt said, in a moment of decision, like it's time to make a decision, it's time to move forward. The best choice you can make is the right choice. The next best choice you can make is the wrong choice. And the worst choice you can make, hey, is no choice whatsoever. It's only once we make a decision that we get some kind of feedback. And once I take action, the feedback comes in, maybe it was the right decision, I keep on going. If it's the wrong decision, I simply redirect. What I wanna say to you is giving in to fear is simply faith in the wrong outcome. And I just want to say this, anytime we step out into the unknown and into uncertainty, there's going to be fear. But what courage is, courage is not the absence of the emotion of fear, but is doing it anyway. I share this vignette with you. I'm sure some of you have heard before, but you got this old Cherokee gentleman and he's got his young grandson and his young grandson comes up to the grandfather and says, granddad, there's this, there's this war going on inside of me. It's a fierce battle. And I've got these two wolves. One is a good wolf and one is a bad wolf. This evil wolf is telling me all these evil things. It's talking about all my failure. It's greed, it's anger, it's envy. And then I've got this good wolf that's compassionate, that's generous, that's inspiring, that's motivating. It's telling me I I can do it. This war keeps going back and forth and granddad, I don't know what to do. Which wolf will actually win? And the granddad simply looked at the son and said, whichever one you feed, 
See, we want to feed our faith and starve our fears. I want to read you something directly from the book. This is what he said. The subconscious mind will translate a thought impulse of negative or destructive nature into its physical equivalent just as readily as it will act upon thought impulses of a positive or constructive nature. This amounts for the strange phenomenon that so many millions of people experience referred to as misfortune and bad luck. Millions of people believe themselves doomed to poverty and failure because of some strange force over which they believe they have no control. They are creators of their own misfortunes because of this negative belief which is picked up by the subconscious mind and translated into its physical equivalent. Wow, the creators of their own misfortune. I want to read you a definition that my friend Google has for the word faith. Faith, according to my friend Google, is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. It's a belief that something will happen without any evidence supporting it. It's believing in someone or something without being able to visually see it. Now I want to share with you what my favorite book says, the Bible. Faith is the substance of the things hoped for. Don't you think about it? It's the substance. It's the stuff the evidence of things not yet seen. It's the stuff that I put my hope in and my trust in by my actions. I want you to think about the word evidence. In a court of law, we hold to the fact that somebody is innocent until they are proven guilty. And it's by the evidence or the lack of the evidence that people are proven guilty or innocent. And so you may be asking, what in the world has this got to do with my dream, my goal, or where I want to go for my future? Well, for me to actually make my dream a reality, I must have faith. See, I can have all the hope in the world. I can dream about things. I can wish for things. But hoping and dreaming does not necessarily mean action. See, with true faith, there is evidence that I believe I will and can accomplish what is currently unseen. I begin to move in the directions of my dream. And there is an expectation that actually propels me forward. There's an expectation that causes me to take certain actions. So I shared with you earlier, I want to be a speaker, a trainer, a coach on the international stage, going around the world, developing leaders. Well, if that is my dream, if I have faith in that dream, it's actually going to cause me to take certain actions right now. If I want to be on the international stage, I'm probably going to start learning some geography right now. I want to make sure my passport is ready to go. I'm going to start developing content right now so when that call comes, I'm ready to go. And I'm setting on expectation that any moment I'm going to get a call or an email, I'm sitting with expectation. That is the faith that's driving me to take action, but it is faith that's causing me to sit in expectation as well but my faith is driving me to take certain actions right now in the present in the current moment see faith requires not just wanting and wishing for a thing it requires action so my faith is going to drive me to take action so when that my opportunity comes that i'm ready coach john wooden says when opportunity comes it's too late to prepare. I want to end this video with a Winston Churchill quote. This is so powerful and I want you to think about who actually said this as I read these words. This was really powerful. To each there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a very special thing unique to them and fitted to their talents. What a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. Friends, I believe in you. I believe in your dream. I want to see you equipped and prepared for when your finest moment comes. I believe God created you on purpose, for a purpose. And many times what I found is most people start on the borrowed belief of other people. They lack belief in themselves. Every awesome person I've ever met, every awesome person I've had the opportunity to read about, they all say the same thing. He believed in me before I believed in me. She believed in me before I believed in me. And I just want you to say, if you don't believe in you, hey, borrow my belief because I believe in you. Hey, this has been our session on faith. I hope you have enjoyed it. I hope it's added value to you. I hope you have an awesome day and God bless.